Um, I'm here to uh, talk to you about site building tools, tips, modules, and tricks. Uh, so I'm going to remind me to press the record button. So my name is Shawnee, for the third time. <laughs> I'm a web developer and designer. I'm a Drupal themer and site builder. Um, like I said, I've been in Drupal, uh, working with Drupal for six years, but I am still new to Drupal. I am not ashamed. There's always something new to learn, and that's a good thing. So this session is for the folks like me who might come across a module or a tool or, or something, um, you know, just working with Drupal and wonder, does anyone else know about this? And why didn't I know about this beforehand? Why didn't I know about this three or four websites ago? Um, this session will teach you a little bit about some modules that will help you uh, get used to the administrative uh, interface in Drupal and make it a little bit easier to use. Um, also, we'll check out some modules that maybe you didn't know existed. And uh, just wondering uh, from this end, is there anyone else here that isn't a site builder? Are there any project managers or module developers? Or Okay, great, cool. So um, at the very end of this session, I'm hoping we might be able to have a show and tell and we can talk about some of the things that I miss or some of the things that are really pressing on your heart that you'd like to share with the crowd. Just a few modules today. Um, We'll talk about something that was a little intimidating to me, but not anymore, not so much, and that's Drush, Drupal's shell. Um, I'll show you some resources, some of my favorites, and um, you know, I've got a full list. And you also find in these slides that many of them are just for your benefit. We won't be able to cover everything, but check out these slides when you get a chance. I've uploaded a PDF version to the um, DrupalCon, uh, Drupal GovCon page here. Check them out and check out the resources listed. We are going to miss a few things. That's going to be uh, Drupal site building and theming basics, uh, module development, and installing Drush. Um, also, a small disclaimer, the site is geared toward folks uh, using Drupal 7 uh, with an emphasis on the modules available built into core for Drupal 8. Um, just a slight, maybe convincing way to move toward Drupal 8, but many of us are still using Drupal 7 and that's perfectly fine. So let's talk about some modules for site builders. Can everyone hear me? Yes. We're okay? Okay. And am I moving quickly? I'm, I'm three minutes in. But I gotta be honest, that, uh, that intro kind of threw me off a little bit. So here we go. <laughs> All right, so these are the essentials for myself. Essential modules for site builders. Um, you'll, hopefully you'll recognize a lot of them, maybe not. Like I said, check out these slides when you get a chance and take a look at each of these modules, drupal.org slash project slash the module name, um, and see what you think about them. Many of them are built into uh, Drupal 8 core already, like views, uh, token, uh, CK editor. Um, you've got block class where site builders might not know, you can actually add class classes to your blocks. Um, you can add menu attributes, you can add classes to your link items in case you, uh, you understand your CSS and that there's some classes that need to be added to specific link items, donate buttons or anything special like that. Um, path auto, create your own URL aliases, node export, move nodes from one Drupal site to another without having to fool with your database, slideshow modules, um, uh, uh, content and finding content modules, lots of great things. I have these listed here because I won't be able to cover them today. They're just too many and they're just too good. <laughs> Today, let's cover module filter. Has anyone heard of that module? How about administration views? Okay. Extend image module. A focal point. And field group. These modules I came across, I'd say a year ago. One of them I came across probably two months ago. And I just asked myself that question. Why didn't anyone tell me? So I'm here today to let you know. So module filter, we're all familiar, familiar with Drupal's module page. Um, if you're into Drupal, backslash admin, backslash modules, you see a module list. Drupal 8 core, which is the screen here, you're able to filter uh, by name. Drupal 7, you're not able to do that. Drupal 8 also, along with Drupal 7, you get a full list, which I haven't listed, of modules. You, you, know, you can check or uncheck them, install them, enable them. Um, but not very easy to work with, not very intuitive. 
Module filter is available for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, and what it does is it applies a UI to your modules page. Gives you a little bit more information about the modules that you have. So here on the left side, under administration, I can see the module that I'm getting ready to enable. I can see under core the module contextual links that I'm getting ready to disable. I have a search bar, filter list, and then I have these nifty little tabs off on, what yellow for on for something that's getting ready to change, um, you know, to get a big picture of the module set, what's going on with my modules page. Save configuration is now at the bottom of your actual modules list and not at the bottom of your modules page. No more scrolling. This is built into Drupal 8. This is not module filter, but this is Drupal 8's core um, behavior for modules, just in case you don't want to install module filter on Drupal 8. Like module filter, you can search for your module and you'll see on the side menu under what categories those modules are found. So very, very helpful. Just thought I'd share that. Now, administration views. Administration views is one of those modules that if you're on a site that doesn't have it, then you're wondering what happened and where to go. It's a sneaky little module that it seems like it would come into core for Drupal 7, but it doesn't. What it does is it, create, it uh, replaces your object management pages, that's taxonomy, that's content, um, with actual Drupal views. So you're able to sort and find your content, you're able to change the form in your Drupal view, customize it to how you like it. Let's check it out. So this is a Drupal 7 core content page. You guys familiar with this page, right? Yeah. So you've got a form here, pretty basic. You can sort or you can filter by status, type, language. Um, and then you see all your content here below. What if you've got tens of thousands of pages of content? What if you just got five pages of content that you don't feel like clicking through to find that one node? Well, this is where administration views comes in. You get a new form. You're able to search for your content. You can filter by a few other things now, maybe taxonomy vocabulary, the type of content it is, um, the author that might have written it. And you've got your list of content just the same, but with administration views, we can change that form itself above, and we can change the table fields to what it is we want to see, what's most important to us, not what Drupal Court decides is important to us. And this is Drupal 8 core content page. Same thing, administration views was built in. So if you're familiar with it in 8, check back on your uh, Drupal 7 sites and make sure that module is installed and enabled for you. Drop into your administration views, uh, the new views. And so that's going to be content, you know, this is your system views, content taxonomy. This is an example of the content view at admin structure views, uh, admin views node, or views views content in 8. <laughs> Here we have our fields, which, is, uh, which, which are our table fields, which we can actually switch around. We can remove these fields. Say you only want to list the actual content title and the author instead of the date published. I'm not sure why you would do that, but perhaps that's what you want to do. You want a minimized content page. This is where you would do that change. And then you can change your filter criteria. That's going to be the exposed form. Here and here at the very top, we can change that criteria now that we have administration views installed. So we can say, how about we add title, we leave type, and then let's remove publishing status. Perhaps we don't need uh, someone to see when that status or when that page was published, but we need them to see whether it's published or not. Maybe we don't need translation language. Perhaps we're not on, on a multilingual site, but we do want you know, some sort of date or some sort of field in our basic page note that we do want to see. Has image. Maybe that's a field you're using and we need to know if a node has an image or not or has an attachment. We can make that change here in filter criteria. Now, extend image module. This is a pretty big one for me as I've worked with government sites probably for, um, at least in Drupal, uh, probably for about five years. I, I didn't start, but... Um, that's five or six years in Drupal, so there's <laughs> a lot of working with federal government sites. Government sites uh, accessibility required. Uh, WCAG uh, level 
AA 2.0 level AA required. Now, um, Extend Image Module allows us to enable our alt text. I came across a site recently, um, it's a wonderful site, um, lots of imagery, no alt text. Have any, has anybody ever uh, been exposed to an image, uh, no alt text, and had to change it yourself manually? Yeah. <laughs> um, this often happens in Drupal 7 because alt text is not required. Uh, you're allowed to enable alt text, but it's not required. We can enable alt field on our image field. So if we will go ahead and add ourselves an image, favorite sneaker there, alt text is not required, so we'll just skip it. You know, perhaps your content manager is in a rush. Running through your basic page form, skips the alt text. That's gonna be big trouble for uh, accessibility in your site. EIM, Extend Image Module, helps alleviate that problem. We install and enable that module. We not only have enabled the alt field, but now we have alt field required, and that's an option. Go ahead and select that, and you'll see in your image uh, field on your form, Alternate text is now required, and this form cannot be submitted without it. It's very important uh, for accessibility. Actually, let me go back here. If you notice, has anyone seen the little crosshair above your images when you, uh, when you upload an image? Anyone ever seen that before? No? Okay, so that's a new module too that I can't wait to jump into because it's uh, pretty cool. That's called the focal point module. Anyone ever heard that name, focal point? So if you're familiar with uh, Drupal's image styles, um, you can actually tell Drupal to scale and crop an image to fit you know, perhaps someone's design for your site. What happens is Drupal takes the center of an image and it'll scale or crop that image by uh, focusing on its center. Well, focal point helps a little bit with that. It's available for Drupal 7 and 8 and it alleviates the issue of having all of your images with a centered focal point, even if the focal point is not in the center. If you're a site builder, you've received bad images before. If you're a themer, you've received bad images from your clients. It's gonna happen, especially if your images um, need to be in different sizes. Say you're featuring, you're featuring your image in a blog list, a latest blog post, but when you go to that blog page, that image needs to be blown up and in hero size. Well, focal, focal point helps a lot with that. By default, I've uploaded an image here. It's the uh, promotional poster from the uh, Star Wars movie Solo. And if you'll notice, the center of the image is above Chewie's head. To Drupal, that's going to be our most important part of the image, by default. But if you ask Han Solo, the most important part of the image is his face. Of course. You know, maybe his eyes. Maybe his gun. But I'd bet on the eyes or the face. We can't crop out our main character on this movie. Boom. Get to your site. Take a look at your image. The focal point is chewy. <laughs> that could be a problem. <laughs> the movie's main character Solo, he's cropped out. Strong chin, but he's gone. Let's fix that with focal point. In your image styles, and is everyone familiar to, with getting to image styles? You know, configuration, media, image styles? With focal point and the crop module, which is a dependency, with those enabled and installed and enabled, you now have a new effect, focal point crop or focal point scale and crop. If you select those and you know, decide on your image dimensions, you'll get that crosshair. That's where that little crosshair comes from. That's how, that's how you know you can make some adjustments to your images. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my focal point to what's most important in this poster, perhaps the star actor. Save and take a look at my page again. And now we haven't cropped out his face. We've decided on the most important part of our image and we've told Drupal, never crop this section out of an image on any image style, in any rendering of this image. So it's a great little tool. If you take a look at something like upcoming shows, this is a list of uh, you know, possible or you know, just sample blog posts I've done. 
I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but the posters are iconic. <laughs> so with these four posters, they use the same image style. It's a grid style, probably 470 by um, 350, and then just shrunk down a little bit wherever it's used. Some of the posters came out just fine. Uh, Star Wars Marathon, the six posters. You're not going to get much better on that one um, if you need to include all six of the first Star Wars. Solo is okay. Star Wars Made Simple, um, the very, very first Star Wars poster. We've got you know, some good uh, focus there. Our first one, though, I didn't feel too good about cutting out that title. And some of your clients aren't going to feel too good about their faces being cut out of their images. So this is where Focal Point will allow you to make those adjustments. All I did was move our, my crosshair around a little bit, and I was able to cut out the title just a little bit more, but not so, so disrespectfully <laughs> that we've got our poster here highlighted and fixed. I even moved Solo up just a tad bit. And what if you had a client who particularly cared about the uh, lightsaber's flash instead of Princess Leia's leg, you, you move it up. So the, you have the opportunity to avoid cropping multiple uh, sizes of the same image and uploading all those files to Drupal. Just use focal point and it'll use that single image. Apply it to your image style and you're, ab you're able to move that focus around. Field group is another module. It's the last module I'll describe. It's another one of those modules that if it's not on your site but you've actually used it before without knowing it, you're going to wonder where it is. You're going to wonder what happened to it. Field group takes that list of fields in your content type form and in your ad content page and it groups them together in something a little more intuitive, more understandable, a hierarchy that you actually create yourself so it's easier to navigate through your content. Field group allows you to choose from different UI options. My favorite are tabs. It's probably evident throughout this uh, presentation. But if we take a look at the default form, the managed content, or actually not the form, sorry, the content type managed fields page, you'll see all your fields here, and I've got field group enabled so I can add a group. But by default, your fields are just listed. Now what happens if you have 50 fields? That you'll have to scroll down and find those settings for each field. Field group helps with that. This is the ad content form, no field group enabled. You've just got your form. You guys are familiar with this form. You just scroll down, fill out everything you need, and save. I've seen forms with tons of fields. It takes a while to sift through all of them. Field group, I've created groups here. Create one tab group, tabs, which tells field group, okay, this is going to be a set of tabs. And then I've got a movie content type that I was able to kind of organize and um, structure the information for in the fields. So my main details are my title, my synopsis, release year. Uh, if I have images or video, I've got that under a different tab. Full cast and crew, that could be director, actors. You know, this can work for any content type. Get those fields organized, get them together, and you'll see, once you get to that ad content form, you can get through it much faster, much easier, by organized fields. So now my main details and my images and video, I can click through there instead of having to do all the scrolling that I was doing before. Now it makes sense. All right, so that's it for our modules. Those were just my five-star modules today. Do you guys have any other questions about those modules? Yeah? Um, for the focal point, mm -hmm. do you have to use um, the field image, or can you use the medium field? You can. You can use the media field. What I find you can't use is uploaded images in your WYSIWYG. 
Okay. Focal point won't apply. If the customer uploads an image, then they can't. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the media field allows you to up upload an image, and focal point will apply to it as long as. Just not in the right. As long as you have it set up in your image style. Are these um, these are all included in Aid now? No. 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 Not at all. No. Yeah. Focal point isn't. Um, Extend image module is, administration views is, module filter isn't, but eight kind of has its own module filter. Let me drop back here, yes. It has its own module filter interface. But um, it's definitely not as good. Actually, this is the eight module filter interface. So you're able to filter by name, but it doesn't have the same tab control. It doesn't give you the same information on the side there regarding what you're installing, what you're um, disabling, things like that. And field group is not included in eight either. Yeah. But I've listed these modules because they are available in eight. And they do fall under Drupal's secure security policy. So they're safe to install. Um, you know, it depends on the uh, design and, you know, requirements of your content. Yeah, sometimes you'll find um, site, our pages are just a little easier to manage when you have the actual image fields. A little easier to keep under control, too, if you keep them in the image fields. Yeah. Um, but there are oftentimes you might have content that requires, you know, a descriptive image with a caption next, you know, in your paragraph body. Yeah, and that's where you would put that. So if you guys are ready, I'll jump, jump into my uh, tips and tricks for site builders. And like I said, these are just an overhaul of things that I just had to share. <laughs> so some of these I'm sure you'll know, and some of these I hope they help. So here's some of the essential tips that I have for site builders for myself. Adopt a content first attitude. When I first got into Drupal, especially coming from front-end web development, it was about that theme. What's this site going to look like? I often have clients who care more about the appearance than they do about their content. But we know <laughs> content's king. Content is what's going to make your site. Plan out your site. Plan it using Drupal's um, structure. Plan it using Drupal's framework. What types of content are you going to have? Are you going to have any lists of content? What types of imagery are you going to have? Not where they go or how they should look, but what are they? Follow the Drupal way. Anybody heard of the Drupal way? It's a big thing in the industry, and everybody has their own def definition. Looking around, I gathered that these three tips kind of embody, or at least are included in everyone's definition of the Drupal way. Separate your content, your theme, and your functionality layers. When I first got, got started in site building, everything happened at once. Everything was going together. But Drupal says, leave your blocks here and your views there. You might have a view block. Leave them alone. You've got a page and you've got an article. Maybe they don't have the same requirements. Separate them. Let your theme be your theme. Don't include content in your theme. Let your theme be reusable. Let your theme be changeable. Keep the integrity of your content. Working with Drupal and not against it. I was a WordPress girl. I pushed back. But in site building, you know, take Drupal on. There's a lot to learn. Anybody met that learning curve? Anybody beat it? Yeah. <laughs> but once you get there, you've got it. And the modules I listed in the essentials list, they help a lot. And they're pretty popular and well supported. 
And I always think of the site builders, the developers, themers, module developers, project managers, always think of those that'll follow after your site. Build out a site so that people understand it behind the scenes. So for me, that means not including any modules that don't fall under Drupal security policy. I just don't want to hear it. Well, why did you install this one? It's not secure. I don't want to see my site fail. Use Drupal in a way that makes sense. You know, why did you include a list of content in your WYSIWYG with images and links that could have been a view. And you just place the block on your page of that view. You know, take advantage of those types of things. Dynamic content. Anybody using the administrative shortcuts? It's an old school tactic. Especially now that we've got admin toolbar and admin menu. You can just hover over your um, admin icons. Or your, uh, sorry, your admin menu links and then you get your drop down. Well, that's one quick tip I'd like to share is use those administrative shortcuts. Especially in Drupal 8. It just makes things faster, getting to those pages faster. This is the Drupal report log, but this is with content filtered. Whenever I come to this page, when I'm building a site, there are too many exception errors, and that means the site's not finished yet. There's SQL errors. There's files not found errors. But if I filter my log messages by content, I can see what folks are doing on my site without having to worry about any of those errors just yet. Because as a themer, I will have to worry about them. <laughs> you guys familiar with this page here? Yeah, this is a good page. You can be using um, Drupal revisions to check and see who revised your content, but this gives you an upfront view of what's going on on your content. You just go to admin reports DB log, and then select the content, click filter, and you've just got more information just like that. It's one of those hidden things I just wish someone told me about. You guys heard of Drush, right? Drush is Drupal's shell. It's used in command line prompt or terminal on Mac. It was scary. Drush seemed to be a developer thing. Uh, Unix folks, <coughs> stuff like that. But site builders can use Drush. Drush makes things fast. Pardon the hideousness of this slide, but I had to get it in. <laughs> If you open Terminal and navigate to your site, if you're using Acquia Dev Desktop, there's a little terminal icon, you can just click on it. You can enter Drush commands to manage your database. Say you've inherited a site, you need to pull down a database from someone else's site, from the server, production, dev. Drush SQL dump, dash dash result file, my backup file, dot SQL. If you're in your Drupal root, and that's usually above your site's all or your uh, themes folder, you'll get a backup file just like that. You just did it in Drush. You can pull it down to your local and you have a backup. So that way if you're doing anything on your site and the site breaks, you ruin some content, you get the white screen of death, just restore your backup. There's a module for this, it's called Backup and Migrate, and I've listed it in the essentials. But this is something I use all the time. It tell me, tells you how many times I've broken local sites, actually. <laughs> you can update your database, Drush update DB. You can clear your cache. You guys are familiar with clearing cache? You can do it right in the admin, but with Drush, Drush CC all, it's a lot faster. Drush cache rebuild in Drupal 8, that's Drush CR. Clears out your menu cache, themes, C 
CSS and JS, you can actually specify what it is you want to clear out. Drush CC, CSS, JS, in case your CSS or your JavaScript is aggregated. Quickly type that in in your sites directory, in your Drupal sites directory, and you've got it. You've, you're all clear. You can also manage your modules. Say you don't want to install a module filter, like I recommended, but you don't want to deal with that modules page. Do it in Drush. You can list your modules with PM list, enable modules, disable modules. There have been times where I've taken on sites where on the server, certain modules work great. They're tied to the server, Del, uh, LDAP, secure access. When I pull them down locally to work on them, they don't work at all. Disable. They're not working, so maybe I can't get to my site, but I can get to it in Drush. Drush disable. You can download modules. That dash Y is just saying yes, skip the confirmation. I know I want to download this. You can update all of your modules. You know they need to be updated. And you can uninstall modules. You can do this right from the command line prompt without having to go into your Drupal backend or your Drupal admin. Drush user management. Now these are links that I've used, or rather these are commands that I've used as a site builder too many times. But I'm so glad I knew about them. And I just am glad that you guys are learning about them today. And create users in Drush. Sometimes as a site builder, we might not have the access, the time, or the know-all to create a user on our Drupal site. Perhaps it's not managed by us. But this is something we can do in Drush, with proper permissions, of course. You can manage roles in Drush. You can add your own administrative role if you need to. There have been sites I've inherited I needed to create a username locally, but I needed to make sure that person, myself, was an administrator so I could work on my own local site. Just add administrator to my role, you role. How many people have been locked out of their own sites? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Call IT. Where are they? Email IT. Help desk ticket. You can unblock yourself. <laughs> using Drush. Best kept secret. UUBLK. Unblock your username. You can change your password if you've forgotten it. Change your password using Drush. And then go ahead and log in on your site. So we actually have more control than we think we do. We have more control than we're told we do. And personally, I filtered out Drush as opportunity because I didn't think it was for me. So I'm here to tell you, site builders use Drush too. One of my best kept secrets, I'm wondering if I should even share. <laughs> I get the white screen of death. I can't log into my site. Perhaps the developers are fixing it, but I need to log in and fix content myself. In fact, I need to get this content fixed before the site goes back up. Drush user login and your username. It generates a link. The link begins with HTTP default. But after that default, if you paste the rest of that link, you get a login to your site. You can log in from the back end. Now this only works with users that have the access to the site. This will not work with anonymous users. You're a site builder, so you have access to your site. You can get to it, even if you can't see the front end of it. You can get to your back end creating your own login link. And it's a one-time link. It will not work for anyone else. So check that out. Check out these two slides and drop into your terminal or your command prompt and play around with your sites. Don't disable any modules, though. Don't d drop the database. <laughs> but play around with your user ID. Change your email, change your password. And definitely unblock yourself. Has the syntax changed uh, from 7 to 8 in Drush? 
No, the syntax hasn't changed, but some of the shortcuts have. For instance, clear your cache. In seven, it's CC, and in eight, it's CR. But when you put an accidental, you know, an accidental command prompt or a command line in a, for seven, you put it in eight, eight will let you know. The least information you'll get is error, this command does not exist. Drush help. That'll tell you all the commands that are available um, for seven or eight, depending on the framework you're working with. The syntax, however, has not changed. Some of the names have. And then the language that seems a little, you know, it's really acronyms. Like, if you see under manage your database, I have drush update db or drush up db. Those are the same thing. Clear cache, cc all, that's really clear dash cache. CR cache rebuild. So you can use shortcuts or you can use a full term. But it takes some playing around with. Now these tools and resources are just tried and true. I've used them for years and just wanted to share. You guys familiar with any of these? WebAIM's color contrast checker for accessibility. Dirty markup. Say you're working with a content page and you look at the source code. The source code is just not understandable. It's tabs all over the place. Copy and paste that source code into this website, Dirty Markup, and it'll beautify it so that it's easier to read. Convert case. Copying, pasting, you know, content from Word needs to be changed. The, the case needs to be changed to uppercase, lowercase. Drop into convertcase.net. Click the button to which you want to change your uh, text case, and it'll change it for you right there. No HTML or anything. 0 to 255, it's just a color picker. Huge color scale. Really helps in accessibility if you want to find the perfect hue of blue to go against yellow, but it has to be accessible. You can use 0 to 255 to get that one done. And Lorem Pixel, has anybody heard of this site? Kind of like Lipsum, but for images. Lipsum gives you Latin text. Lorem Pixel just gives you an image placeholder. You can use graphics. You can use a gray image with the dimensions. But you can create a placeholder on the fly at any size. And you can drop it into your Drupal site. Next are a few resources. Drupalize.me. Great video tutorials on site building. Some are free. Code Karate. These are older resources, but they're daily dose of Drupal. Here at this link or on YouTube, great resources for site building. They really break down, two young guys, they break down every possible module that a site builder could dream of. Views, view slideshows. The great thing about videos, rewind. Drupal documentation. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Drupal 7 documentation has gotten so much better since Drupal 8 was released. Because the Drupal 8 documentation is great. So someone went back to Drupal 7 and tidied it up. Check out that documentation. Much easier to understand. And then YouTube. Anybody use YouTube for tutorials? Do it yourself? You use it for Drupal? Check it out for Drupal. Right here is a link straight to a query in Drupal site building. Lots of information on getting your sites up. Notice I didn't include the Drupal community. We are the Drupal community. You can Google in your favorite search engine. I didn't drop Google in there, but I just did. <laughs> Google your question. You'll end up on Stack Overflow. You'll end up on the Drupal community forums. But this presentation wanted to include more. And that's all I have for you guys. A couple of modules, tools, tips, and tricks. Any other questions? Yeah? Is it 
Is there any um, advice you have for doing like site migrations as you're going through cleaning up content? Like I noticed that the page not found. We actually built our own module to try to find those three even though it existed there. Ah, are you talking about? Let me see if I can migrate. Reports, okay. the, and the reports. Uh, so like that tells you all the 404s mm -hmm. for internal or mm -hmm. external or both. It tells you your internal 404s. Okay. Mm -hmm. But your question was, is there any advice for the migration? Yeah, for cleaning up content and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there? Um, well, with Drupal Migrate, which is an experimental module, and Migrate UI. Is that for Drupal to Drupal? It's for Drupal to Drupal. I'm talking static to Drupal. Ah, static to Drupal. I've only done it manually. Okay, you do. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I've done it manually. Anyone have any advice on moving static to Drupal and skipping those 404s? Feeds. Link, link checkers. Feeds can be helpful. Feeds. Feeds, mm -hmm. feeds, feeds importer. Mm -hmm. That's aggregator in Drupal 8, I think. Yeah. It's seven. It's seven, yeah. A lot of coffee. <laughs> Copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes? I have a question about um, how do you do charting? I saw the charts module, but. Ah. Coffee. Charts. Now, I haven't used charts. What are your use cases? Just want to do some graphs. Just do some graphs? I haven't used charts. My graphic designers <laughs> have done charts. Yeah. Anyone use charts for uh, Drupal? No, not yet. Yeah. Yes, sir. Has uh, there been a, in Drupal, is there anything that do for charts better than like what we've done in Drupal 7 is taking a warm chart and underneath putting a are you doing your org charts in PDFs or? Uh, the org charts are actually images in the files. And They're images. That's how we get them for our customers. Okay. And what we want to do is, I'd like to be able to do, uh, like in .NET world, mm -hmm. I create actually a, P, uh, a org chart in uh, Visual Studios and build it out and it's all five months. And it's all there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's there mm -hmm. for Drupal 8. I'm sorry, I couldn't find it for Drupal 7. Okay, so for Drupal 8, I can honestly say I am not sure. Have you tried um, actually building it out in JavaScript or jQuery? Yeah, yeah. Drupal's pretty good with those, um, you know, with J JavaScript libraries. I haven't tried an actual org chart rendering, renderer in Drupal 8, but there could be a module for that. There really could be. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? Yes, sir? The uh, admin shortcuts, are those per user or are those sort of like shared among users? Can per user. Yeah, you can mark whichever you like, whichever is convenient to you. Same, a lot of the user things, user interface things, including um, some folks like the admin overlay, or they like the admin pages to actually open in your browser as admin pages. That's per user too. You can change that in your user profile or the site profile. Mm -hmm. Do you have another? Mm -hmm. Do you have like tips for sort of approaching like something like the Drupal Stack Exchange? versus like Drupal forums, because um, they seem to have different like requirements and uh, mm -hmm. approaches and stuff like that. Um, my experience with both, <laughs> throw your question out there. There's always someone that's willing, happily, to move your question to another <laughs> section. <laughs> but throw it out there. Yeah, throw it out there. Um, I find Drupal, the Drupal forums to be um, a little faster and a little friendlier. Drupal forums, you do receive confirmation. Um, people give it. I'm one of those uh, users that goes through and says, this worked for me. You know, post number five worked great for me. Is it that you have questions to ask or that you want to give advice? And questions. Questions. Yep. Just put it out there. Yeah, yeah. Consider some of the Drupal uh, sections that you think your question would fall under, get it as close as possible, especially when it concerns modules. Would, they be, would the questions come from maybe an error or just your experience using Drupal? Uh, just trying to figure out how to 
make something. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the stack exchanges are kind of sometimes feel a little hostile or like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, it's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, anyone else have that experience? Looking at Stack Exchange, even the Drupal forums, Drupal.org forums, a little hostile. Yeah, sometimes just Googling, browsing. Google your exact question. I found that helped a lot in college. <laughs> <laughs> the exact question, somebody else is asking it. And somebody has been willing to answer. I think the biggest danger of Googling questions, which I do all the time, mm -hmm is that one of the problems with the whole Drupal development over the years is there's so much old information that's no longer current mm -hmm. and there's no easy way to clean that out of the web and clean that out of even Drupal.org. They're doing some work on that. So when you search for questions, you may find an answer to your question that was two years old and no longer relevant. Mm -hmm. So that's just not easy, but it's one of the only ways to go. Absolutely. Um, what I have found is that sometimes if you can find a, like here in DC, we have a, a in Slack, there's a DC Drupal, or mm -hmm. you know, a greater DC Slack channel. Okay. And sometimes there are people hanging out, you can ask a question very quickly mm -hmm. to see if there's a pointer to something that's more updated or a quick answer. Mm -hmm. It's not, you're not gonna have somebody solve all of your problems for you. Right. At least if you wanna check out you know, what somebody might know currently uh, or point to a post that's current. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem. There's so much trash out there that's old yes. that it clutters up your search mm -hmm. results. Uh, one thing I do do when I run across old information, especially if I don't know that it's old, um, you know, there's a lot of Drupal terminology. I start searching for that. You'll come across the newer information, especially in the Drupal documentation. Sometimes searching the Drupal documentation isn't easy. You search for views and you might end up with an entire page, a list of all the um, hook form alter functions. You may not need that. <laughs> but doing a search on some of the keywords, navigating through the Drupal documentation will probably get you closer into the newer information. That's what I find. Do you guys have any other questions that I can help? So uh, on your side management, uh, I found some issue according to uninstall. So this basically based on my experience, uh, difference between Drush uninstall on Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 difference. So basically uninstall requires like Drush DIS when it mm -hmm. to the server and Drupal 8 working like to be uninstall. Yes, absolutely. And that's actually um, an answer to his question, whether the syntax has yeah. changed, the terminology, yeah, some of the terms have changed. For example, as I know, uh, that you're using Drush SQLP, yes. so it should be like existed at the base. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So basically, when you're trying to do it, it's not at the base. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So there are other Drush um, terms that I don't often use, but I am familiar with. Maybe you want to drop your database, SQL-drop. That can get a little risky. Um, you're pulling down your entire Drupal database, but if you have the restoration file, sql clean pushes it back up. And, and, and as I see, Drush CC, for example, when you want to when you change uh, some uh, backup, backend stuff, for example, some model, and you try to type Drush CC, mm -hmm. for example, modules, you'll be clearing the models in Drupal 8.2. Drush CR. Uh, no, Drush CC and models working in Drupal 8.2. Working in Drupal 8. Yes. I haven't gotten Drush CC to work in uh, Drupal 8 myself. I'm surprised about it because, <laughs> yeah, basically, as I, as I see, Drush CC there is alias for Drush CC only in Drupal 7. Right. But Drush CC is separate area working too. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah and uh, interesting how mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, create a user. Yep, create a user. Mm -hmm. Sir, you had a question. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say um, there's a there is a difference with Drush commands in Drupal 8.4. Okay. A bunch of stuff starts dropping off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
that was mm -hmm. rude when I first figured that out. Mm -hmm. Like, what happened to my yeah. life? Yeah. I wish someone would have told me that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you have some questions about Josh, so, like, I'm using Josh 8 and now mm -hmm. I'm using Josh 9. Right? Yep, let's so move on to Josh now. How you can update it directly in some projects. Yes, I have. Um, this session wasn't to cover um, Drush installations, but yes, I am familiar with the change. And some of your Drupal 8 sites, the Drush won't work because of the um, discrepancy. Sometimes it has to do with Symphony. Uh -huh. Also, Drupal 8 runs on the Symphony engine, yeah. and Drush um, runs to an issue. I mean, in my experience with federal sites, we're still on Drupal 7 a lot. Yeah, and so Drush is pretty, pretty um, well, uh, yeah, it's pretty well written out on Drupal 7. It's still there, still available. I was going to say, when you do upgrade or update Drupal, um, one thing I wasn't doing that I find was very helpful recently is checking the release notes. I'm not sure if they specified that Drush changed in Drupal 8.4, but that would be one of those items that um, they would list in the actual release notes before you download that new version of Drupal. Check those notes. Um, that lets you know if any of your uh, content will change behind some of the changes. Um, there could be JavaScript changes, there could be CSS changes in core if one of your themes is based on a core theme. So check those release notes and make sure that your sites are still going to be pretty stable. And of course do it locally first. Do it on dev, do it on staging, and then push to production. Is there, um, is there a better place than just having Drush to get the list of commands that are current in the version you're using? Or? Um, yes, there's a lot of resources out. Um, there's a lot of dr Drush cheat sheet sheets. Okay. Yeah, Google Drush cheat sheets and you'll see the list of commands. Mm -hmm. I think that's my time, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for listening. And, you know, I hope to come here again and uh, share some more. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing some of your tips and tricks. That's what matters.